Welcome to J is for Justice podcast. If live breaking news and following true crime is your thing, then please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you like what you see in my videos, please consider giving them a thumbs up. With HelloFresh, you get fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Now, you know me always getting that DoorDash order. I've got to start pinching some pennies. HelloFresh is an easy way to eat well and save money. You can cut back on expensive takeout and delivery and get started with HelloFresh. You'll love how fast, easy, and affordable it is to whip up a restaurant quality meal right in your own kitchen. And that's no joke. You will look like a bona fide chef. Skip the snowy drive to the, to the grocery store and stock up on snacks, sides, desserts, and more at the HelloFresh market. Simply add these staples and sweets to your weekly order and they'll arrive at your doorstep along with your meals. There are so many meals to choose from no matter what you like. If you are ready to try HelloFresh, just click the link below for a special limited time discount plus free shipping and try HelloFresh today and save money like I did. And don't forget to share with me in the comment section what you think of your HelloFresh box. And I want to thank you guys for listening to that little bit of housekeeping. And if you try HelloFresh, I guarantee you, you'll like it. It's super, super deal. Um, but anyways, let's let's get into part two. Welcome back to J is for Justice. Your first part is uploading. I hope you enjoy that. I hope it wasn't too grueling or too boring. Um, let me know what you guys think of the jam session. Part one, we're going to get into part two just here in a second. I've got my coffee, and I hope you do too. I hope you're having a great Saturday morning. Let's continue. We left off with the meta platforms, which is Facebook, and we're going to go right to the Moscow Police Department Forensic Lab. And it looks like on the 9th of January, they got the search warrant for data extraction from Brian Koberger's phone located on USB external HD with serial number blank. The warrant was served on 1-9 in person at the Moscow Police Department Forensic Lab. And then inventory was created for everything on that phone. So the, again, this was on... The 9th of January. USB drive and Brian with Co Brian Koberger's phone data. This is a Seagate 2 TB external USB hard drive with serial number blank. And this is what they recovered, I think, in PA. One of those drives. PayPal and Venmo. I know Venmo has been a big part of this case. So let's see what they did with Venmo slash PayPal. On the 19th, they asked for the information, and on the 21st, FBI financial specialist agent Michael Douglas received an email on 12, 12, this Moscow Police Department forensic detective got the information. For Ethan, Maddie, Zana, Kaylee, and three blanks. We're shooting blanks with every one of these. At least three blanks. So they asked for an extension because they didn't get that stuff back yet. Reddit. 
Oh my God. Papa Rogers. Could this be the Papa Rogers information? Let's see. On November 20th, they got the search warrant. And then on the 19th of December, they got an email back from Reddit. And this is for Kaylee. Reddit for Kaylee. And weird. Okay, so no Reddit for Brian unless that's just still sealed. I'm sure they could still have stuff sealed. They just release this i don't i don't really understand this is a this case is a mess this is for snapchat the yik yak one is really interesting too yik yak i've never even heard of i had to look it up so they asked for the information on the 21st of november and they got it on the 29th of november That is all blanked out. We can't see that. So between August 1st and November 19th for Maddie Mogan, they want all of her Snapchat information. And then we have a second snap and this is going to be for whom? Same dates. Zana. Oh, it has all of them. Snap accounts of Zana, Kaylee, Ethan, blank, blank, and blank. And then the following identifiers. So that must mean a different name, like I said before, that they use on the social media platforms. So Zana, Kaylee, Ethan, blank, blank, and blank. With the following identifiers, blank, 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 and blank. From August 1st to November, or yeah, November 20th. Now we've got two for T-Mobile. On November 16th, I obtained a search warrant for T-Mobile called Data Records. And on the 17th, it was served via Snapchat law enforcement portal. On the 18th of November, they received an email with the data and they download all the data on that date. Why would they ask for T-Mobile call data through Snapchat? If anybody knows, tell me in the comments. For a time period of August 1st to the present, T-Wireless subscriber name unknown. They have the numbers, but unknown are these burner phones. Oh, shit. Anything that's been deleted, anything from these phones with these phone numbers associated. Here's the second T-Mobile. Sorry, I'm not talking much. I'm just, I'm skimming so we can get through these quick. So they want the GPS coordinates from this T-Mobile account from 3 to 5 a.m. on November 13th. So two T-Mobile two accounts with no names attached. All right, now we're on to um, Umpqua Bank. Umpqua Bank. On 
on November 19th, Umpqua. And on November 23rd, they got an email with the information. And this is, ooh, security video. Check this out. Security video at 609 South Washington Street at the bank. All right, so they're looking for exterior camera surveillance footage from November 12th at 9 p.m. to November 13th at 12 p.m. at Umqua Bank. Now I've got to look this up. So this is 609 South Washington Street. 609 South Washington, Moscow, Idaho. Oh, I saw that co-op in the um, police blotter a lot. See, now I'm going to have to go back through the blotter and see if anything came up from here. Let's see what's over this way. Drive up banking. So right here is the bank, and this is where the ATM would be. That's John's Alley Tavern. I've seen that in the blotter as well. Whoops. So this must be the route that he took, and they have camera footage from is what I'm thinking because you go back here and look at the map. If you look at this bank down here, here's the Moscow Police Department. This is King Road right here. So if he came in on this main road eight, I think they're thinking maybe he drove by. I don't know or did he use the, the ATM. I don't know, but that's where Umqua Bank is. UPS. Now we are shipping with UPS, maybe. UPS, North Grand Avenue in Pullman, Washington. Twelve two. Brian was still in Pullman. They obtained a search warrant for UPS and the warrant was served on the 5th. And on the 5th, UPS responded. Delivery truck video. Oh, shit. UPS delivery truck video. Yo, what does that mean? What did he? Oh, so he had something delivered in Pullman. So maybe they're going to place him getting that knife delivered. Check this out. Any and all video that is recorded and stored on any delivery service truck that was in Moscow, Idaho between November 6th and November 14th. So they must have got a receipt that he bought this knife and then they saw it was shipped by UPS. So now they've requested the delivery video from UPS. They're going to be able to put this all together. I have a feeling Verizon Wireless. That's really interesting. So if they can like put a trail of him, you know, purchasing, searching for it online, purchasing it, having it delivered by UPS, video of it being brought to his house. And we don't know what other things they have. They could have all those pings and all that video of the car. They could also have video of Brian. We don't know. We don't know. This is really interesting, though, because this is probably just a smidgen of what they have. On November 17th, they requested the information from Verizon. 
data records associated with blank. But maybe it will say down here. August 1st, 2022 to present. Verizon wireless number blank and then subscriber name three of them unknown at this time. So they were trying to get find out whose phones these were, I guess. There's another Verizon. GPS coordinates from this Verizon account. And we don't know whose account it is, though. That's just craziness. All right. So this is for GPS coordinates of that Verizon phone. Walmart. Could this be the Dickies mystery? The Dickies mystery. He's not. Walmart. 28th of November. They are looking for a purchase from Walmart of the knife in the sheath. Huh. I thought it would be the clothes. So maybe they're thinking he bought it online at Walmart. I don't know if they sell those in the store, do they? And they have an extension on that one. Yahoo. Yahoo Records. Yahoo Records. Blanked out. Kaylee. Kaylee Gonsalves. Yahoo email address. From August 1st, 2022 until November 19th, 2022. Yahoo email for Kaylee. This is Yik Yak. Now, before we get into this, let's go here and I'll show you what Yik Yak is. If you don't know. Yik Yak is a... Yik Yak is a social media smartphone application launched in 2013 and relaunched in 2021, which is available for iOS and Android, and it allows people to create and view discussion threads within a five mile radius. It's a location based anonymous social media app with a controversial past. And yes, looking it up, there's been problems in colleges with this app in the past. Going back to the records, though. On January 25th, they obtained a search warrant for Yik Yak, and on the 27th, they got the info back. And this is all redacted, but let's see if there's anything else down below. All right, so this is Yik Yak for Madison, Kaylee, Zana, and or Ethan. On the Yik Yak account of Brian Koberger with any of the following identifiers, email addresses blank and or blank and or blank and or phone number blank and or IMEI blank. Generated on or between June 1st, 2022 present and then we have another Google and we are almost done two more So this is just the order to seal the Google warrants. 
And that looks to be it, folks. That looks to be all of the stuff that they did release. Uh, there was a lot. And I guess I can kind of understand why this would be complex. This seems pretty complex to me. But I feel pretty good about this stuff. How do you feel about this? What do you think of all the banks? And do you think that that means anything? Do you think that they're just dotting their I's and crossing their T's? What are your thoughts? Um, I'm curious what you think. So before we end, though, I want to go back to the Yik Yak and show you some stories of some things that have happened at college at colleges regarding this app. Right here, um, this is from March 17th, actually, last year. And this is in Arizona. This is just a quick example. It says, as the fall semester wrapped up for students in 2021, they unfortunately witnessed the return of an infamous social media app, Yik Yak. Um, it was removed from the App Store in 2014 due to connections to bomb threats, sexual harassment, and discrimination. So this is actually San Diego. It came back to the San Diego campus. For students who are seniors now, this app, app is hauntingly familiar. This is because most of us grew up with a social media website called AskFM which was pretty toxic for cyberbullying. Yes, it was. Um, so an aspect Ask FM and Yik Yak Share is the common and is the element is the element of anonymity. This feature of both sites is easily the reason why they have been so toxic to their users and their reputations. More specifically, Yik Yak differentiates from others for two main factors, the anonymity and the five mile radius of networking. The app only requires a phone number or email, and the rest is anonymous. Essential, essentially, it seems it was designed for college campuses while appealing to high school because of the local event announcements by users or from getting to share opinions about certain topics related to college-age individuals. So with all the kids living in close proximity... On a day-to-day -day basis, I see Yik Yak posts pop up within five to ten minutes of each other. Wow. The majority are extremely negative and problematic. Scrolling through the feed on a Monday night of finals, the app is flooded with posts about substance abuse, vulgar and degrading comments, and some occasional cyberbullying. One even attempts to make a joke about a certain campus community harming other students. Interesting. So what was going on on Yik Yak, if anything, right? But there's been students, there was students in, I think it was South Carolina that um, actually went to their college and president and said, we, we want this banned. So before I let you guys go, let's take a look at the Lata County Jail roster, shall we? We've got some newbies. And let's see who we have that's that's joined Brian Koberger in the Lata County Jail. We've got Andy Apple. But it looks like now he's been there since 526. He wasn't on here before. So some of these guys just pop up out of nowhere. So Andy Apple. And then we've got Sergio Ayala. Jamie Codwalder, he's still there. Dewey and Earl are still hanging out. Got Dewey and Earl. Uh, Kyrie Currington is new. Tyler Dorsey. Um, we've got John Lee Garrett. And Ricky Sly High Eagle has been there. He's not new. We've got some newbies down here. We've got Logan Timothy Waddle. We've got Luke Jonathan Triffitt. And we've got Ren Stockton. Robin Rashids, she's been in there. Um, Devin James Paris. 
We've got Harry Styles, Harrison Styles, Papillon. Make that make sense. Ryan Koberger. And then we've got this Justin Neal Jorgens right here. Justin Neal Jorgens. He's new. Rihanna Jabora and Brandy Lee Holland. So, yeah. Paris is 3 1. Harry Styles is 221. Harry Styles. Um, Stockton Wren is 3 8. This Triffitt Luke Jonathan, he's been there since 826, but he's never popped up here before. And then we've got Logan Waddle, he's 219. And then if we go back here, John Lee Garrett, he's been in there since Halloween. And Tyler Dorsey since the 7th of January. And then this guy, Kyrie, that's sexual battery. Um, he was just arrested a couple days ago. And then Dewey was on the 19th of November. And then we've got this Earl Campbell. Dewey and Earl must be related or brothers. Then uh, Earl was arrested on the 25th of February. So, yeah, weird. Then Jamie was 11.27. I'm sorry I didn't go through these the first time. And then the Sergio is 3.3. And Andy Apple, again, I said, is he's from last year, beginning of the year. So there you go. All right. That is the end of our Coburger Jam session for this Saturday, March 11th. I hope you guys all have a great day. I'm going to be continuing to put together my studio. Um, thank you guys for all of your generosity and investing in me. And it's amazing that I have people that invest in me and this podcast and this podcast is yours as well. So thank you, Robertas, Robertalinos and non Roberta and Bertolinos alike. I will see you guys next time. Dance it out again. I will see you soon. Take care. Stay safe. you and